Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here with a little more chit-chat on that subject. Uh, light versus darkness, the demonic versus holiness and, and, and godliness and all of that. You know, when you see how life brings about choices, I mean, we get delivered choices on a every minute, every second of the day, we're constantly bombarded with choices. Now, I want to share this with you. There is something that happens to people who want the light. People who want the things of God. Listen to this. If you're inside of a dark room, you're in there for a very long time. Maybe you've been sleeping a while, and, and you have blockouts all over your windows so no daylight can get in. And you wake up and the room is good and dark. But you get a call and you got to rush out. You, you know, you're just taking a nap. You got to grab your keys and rush out into the bright daylight. Well, here's what happens. When you've been in the dark that long. Your eyes have acclimated, your, pu your pupils have dilated, your, you are accustomed to the dark for that moment. Now you have to bust out of the house, boom, sunlight in your face. Whew. Whew. Wow. You can barely see, can't you? I mean, you're almost blinded by the glare of bright daylight. It's nothing harmful. But by the way you're reacting, you would think that something was being shot at you. To, yeah. That's a natural response to eyes that are accustomed to the dark. It's the exact same response we have to the ways of God. We don't want to pay the cost to be the boss. We like the dark. We can do our best stuff in the dark. Hey, baby. Yeah. Give me a call. Wait till about 9 p.m. All the kids will be in bed. And hubby will be in bed too. Call me. Or as they say. Yeah, right. I mean, it's like, really? Um, you have excuses though. Whether it's your husband or your wife. Not only do they not satisfy you. But they're not willing. They hold you at bay. They're cold. They're rigid. The love is no longer there. You try to rekindle the fire, but it's out for good. You're only in it for the sake of the children. Right. Uh-huh. Sure you are. And you not only lie to them, you lie to yourself, you lie, you lie to the person you're married to, and when everything settles down, everything's quiet and it's dark, you're going to go buy a loaf of bread at the store, put gas or get the car washed, you know, after the lines die down. And you go, just like a little, <laughs> like a little mouse, <laughs> feet swift to mischief, running to mischief. <laughs> I'm here baby come get in my car and we'll go and we'll steal away we'll get a room but we gotta be up by such a time cause you gotta get back home and I gotta get back home <laughs> there are people who go to church every weekend who serve in the church not everybody. 
I know some real honest to goodness born again Christians who live what they preach. I'm talking about those that don't. They're mixed right in with them. That's the sad part. Yeah, mixed multitude. However, they will sit there and they will, I'm talking about people who are just all out every weekend or every couple of nights. Brother man is coming over spending the night or you're over his house spending the night and you guys are playing house and you're playing touchy-feely in the dark and you're doing everything a married couple does. So you date 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Oh, but you're living a holy life, right? Sure you are. Because that's what you do in the daylight. But when the dark comes, that's when the naughty come out to play. Just like roaches. You have to recognize the fact that God knows what you're doing. He knows the plans of mice and men. He knows all the little schemes and the little underhanded endeavors and agendas that you're really putting out there, those secret agendas that nobody else knows. But the two of you, or the four of you for that matter, whatever, however you roll, Listen, God is not mocked whatsoever. That means whatsoever, which means whatsoever. You got it now? Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. It's so much more serious than you think because we live in the dispensation of grace and God is merciful and all that and he doesn't come down and thunder lightning and zap you while you're in the middle of screwing somebody else's wife or husband or you, 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 know, you get away with murder because you have taken all the credit while the person who did the job never gets a raise, never gets paid and you're climbing that, that corporate ladder on the top of the heads and the shoulders of people you won't give credit to because you're so ambitious. Yeah, you thought I was going to talk about sneaking around in the dark again. Even though you're living like you're in the light, your deeds are in the darkness. Because the only ones that know that you're screwing those people and stabbing them in the back and cheating them out of what's rightfully theirs is you, God, and them. But it's in the dark. See, the dark for God is daylight. So no matter how you do your business, God knows. He sees. Boy, I sound like I'm fussing. Anyway, I don't mean to. <laughs> I just get emphatic. Anyway, but listen, be very careful. Because... There does come a payday. You know how the IRS comes knocking on your door to collect? Yeah. Well, there's going to come a day when God's going to come knocking on your door to collect. And it can come in many forms. It may not be financially the way that you backstab someone else. But it may come through your help. You may end up with a debilitating disease that takes 20 years to eat you up alive. And all the whole time you're in pain and you're living in more and more poverty because all your money, all your riches is going to the doctor, the hospital, the medication, your equipment that's there to, to feed you your meager life. All that cheating, all that backstabbing, all those lies that you did when nobody was looking. All those underhanded schemes that take place in the shadows. 
of the back, the corner, the dark. Please be careful. Please. You may be getting over like a fat rat right now, baby. But God is going to come knocking on your door. And many of you think you'll have to die for that to happen. No. God knows what hurts you the most. It may be you losing your child. What are you willing to pay for the schemes of the darkness? This is like a warning or something. I'm not exactly sure what I'm talking about. But sometimes I can feel an urgency that somebody is dancing on real dangerous turf. The, the ground looks solid. But there is a, a, I don't know if it's called a, a chasm or, uh, or a weak soil underneath it. And it's about to cave in and you're about to fall into a sinkhole that you will never climb out of if you don't stop playing these games that you do in the dark. This is in love. The message is in love. The warning is in love. Be very careful. Turn around before you've gone down that road too far. Turn around. Jesus is waiting with open arms. He's not going to hold his breath. Turn.